A device ID is a hexadecimal value that does not have a pantry, kids, goes credit to card. credit cards, travel, doesn't it doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. Right, exactly. Like, it's the person behind that that you want to reach and motivate and expose to an advertising message that help, makes their life better and they convert and do something. So, you know, we're all about really people, not proxies for people, but again, everything maps to census. And we think that that's going to shift the industry away from truly like audiences to people. Hi, this is Evan Shapiro, your media cartographer. I'm here with Big Brains at Cannes. I've got Scott McKinley, the founder and CEO of Truthset. And it feels like your company is dedicated to creating a higher standard of data. Is that a mission that you guys take on? Yeah, that is, that is the mission. It's to recognize that not all data is created equal. There's great data, there's middling data, and there's not great data. And uh, we're trying to expose that to buyers and sellers so that you can, just like octane rating on a gas pump, you can choose what level of accuracy you want for a given operation. And we're doing this across all audience data sets. Can you double click on that? Because I say not all data is created equal. And I, I feel like people nod and they yes me, but they don't necessarily understand exactly what I mean there. Talk about what, first of all, there's these data vendors out there that are selling what is supposed to be first party data, email addresses or hashed emails or whatever, and how does a bad data batch get into the market? Why, how do we know what's good data from bad data? Uh, there's sort of two questions, in, or two answers yeah, to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of them is, um, it's hard to be precise about who a person is and, and all their demographics and behaviors and all these, it's just hard, you know, there's companies that have been at it for decades who are in our data collective that they still don't get everybody right every time. If I ask 22 different data providers about you, I'm gonna get 22 different answers a lot of times. That, that's just a function of just, you, know, you can't serve everybody in the whole country and nail this down. So that's, there's always error in there and that's what we're trying to identify and allow buyers and sellers to parse out if they want. Uh, regarding why it's like that, in addition to just being difficult, there's just a perpetual incentive to put more identities in more targeting buckets. It's like the incentive is to sell your record as many times as possible. And unfortunately, uh, with no accountability before Truthset showed up, um, someone could put you in a male and a female targeting segment, and they do all the time. Yeah, and oftentimes it's not even so much that the identity set they're selling for me is incorrect or been overused. It's sometimes the identity that they're selling doesn't exist. It's a, it's a, to a certain extent, a phantom. Is that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, I mean, you're getting on what I think is the is the killer appness of what we're doing, which is because we have so many high quality data providers participating in this cooperative collective. Um, we really are, are able to to get it down to the human signal that actually exists. We pin everything to census. So the world of one time I was part of an acquisition of a company that, and, and the head of data science told me he could deliver you know, six million left-handed soccer moms in Kansas City. I'm like, okay, hold on a there second. There are six million people in Kansas City. <laughs> there are 1.2 million people in Kansas City and just off the top of my head, moms are gonna be like less than 20% or less than 40% or so. You know, it breaks down very quickly. So we're trying to like, let's, let's move the whole industry from a paradigm of like uh, immense noise of impossible volume and sketchy precision to people. I mean, let's be clear, you have 20 billion device IDs rolling around out there. A device ID is a hexadecimal value that does not have a pantry, kids, goes credit, to, card, credit cards, travel, it doesn't taxes. matter. <laughs> exactly. Right, exactly. Like, it's the person behind that that you want to reach and motivate and expose to an advertising message that help, makes their life better and they convert and do something. So, you know, we're all about really people, not proxies for people, but again, everything maps to census. And we think that that's going to shift the industry away from truly like audiences to people, you know what I mean? Yeah, and uh, I did a project with Bill Dressable <coughs> recently and I, they brought me to an intersection with your team and Sim yep. on a study that you're doing. And the, their uh, uh, cursory data or the original top level data showed that data providers, the average data provider shows four times as many <laughs> IP addresses yeah in a household than actually exists right. in that household. To I'm sorry, two to four times as many. How is that, like, how is that possible? Explain how somebody's selling IP addresses 
for a household that it is not actually connected to that household? I mean, it's it, you just have a an ocean. I mean, I'm just visualizing. If I could if I could describe what I'm seeing in my head, it, it's it's like a, a monsoon of these. D these device IDs, and they're coming and going, they're getting refreshed, they're getting deprecated. On purpose, that's part of it, that's, is that they're forced to refresh the IP address. That's, that's right, and that refresh window may get so tight that IP becomes Meaningless. basically unusable because it's so short. Right now, I believe 1% of IP addresses refresh every day, which means a little over three months you've refreshed all of them. Right. So how can you build a profile on an IP like that? Look, I, I'm going to be blunt, like, IP address should not be the thing that we move to from cookies. <laughs> this is like, it's not, did it's we not learn that out lesson? Out of the frying pan into the literal <laughs> yeah. fire. Yeah, and even the, figurative I mean, fire, the, I guess. Yeah, and the cookie was like, you can almost blame the cookie for the failure of the addressable ecosystem to deliver value that it promised 25 years ago. Because the cookie was never meant to be an ad tracking. And it, could, it, meant to, it was meant to like, hey, log in in your bank, I'm not gonna make you log in again, that kind of thing. It wasn't meant to follow you around the internet and be traded among, like, it's been so abused, and it's not, a, so it was a false positive, pretending. It worked. It didn't. <laughs> For, oh, right, it, right. It, it worked to fool everybody, to make right. them think that this is a person, but it wasn't, and IPs are, I would say IPs might even be worse. <laughs> right, because they're, they're being, re we are forcefully replacing them on an ongoing basis to protect the privacy of the end user, and then we're using them to identify the end user. It makes absolute sense. Totally, and then you have IPs that represent 40, 50 households, right. you know, IPs that represent entire... Well, because you have the multi-dwelling uh, units. Yes, that, I yes, mean, yes. I live in a building with 150 apartments. How yeah. could you possibly tell one IP address from another in that? Yeah, and, and look, just to, I mean, just to drop a grenade on this whole subject, um, look at what it takes to get an IP to represent, a, a, to put a demographic on an IP, which right. is what's getting... I'll tell you what it is. You have an IP, you've got to figure out how to associate that with a household. That's going to be around 50% or less on average. Some are very good. So you're already losing. You're already losing 50% in terms of accuracy. Then you have to get the household to the people in the household. We did a study with SIM two years ago that showed the average accuracy of putting people in households across the major providers of those services is 51%. So now you're losing another 51%. So you're down to 25% accuracy. In accuracy. Or look at the other way around. You're already at 100% potential compound error. Then you have to get the right attributes to the people. That's averaging right. 30 to 60 percent wrong, all the time so across. You're down to like seven percent accurate. You have a, a look at it that way, or it's a potential 150 percent per compound. Like, why is this acceptable? It's so not. the so the answer is you mentioned this a little before is to get data from qualified, uh, high quality data providers, and so who is that? I mean, we look the business model. Who do you partner with? To we have we have uh, all the major, most of the major uh, data providers in the U.S. Epsilon, Experian, TransUnion, and, and, a, and a bunch of others who have agreed, almost shockingly, to let us analyze their data, combine it with their competitors' data, look at who's arguing about. I mean, there shouldn't be twenty different versions of what you actually are. You are objectively a bunch of things. You are. I can see you sitting here, right? Thank you. <laughs> and it's. I mean, it's. I, I can. I can talk about this for hours because, like, that dynamic is a, such a problem for open programmatic and it will be for television as well. The wall guards are sitting there with perfect, near perfect identity and near perfect household. That is the, that is the advantage they have. And I, and I tell people in our industry who are not the wall guards all the time, like they, we can't, the rest of us can't compete with the wall gardens because they have this massive and very accurate um, identity graph. We need to be able to play in that. Firm. Not only does it have an amazing identity graph, it has, a, it doesn't have this crazy, factory to factory to factory to pipes to transition to like, oh, that went into the sewer and it come back out, you know. We have this crazy supply chain. Data, we've seen this a lot. Data can start at 90% accuracy at source from a, from a really good data provider. By the time it's an ad hitting a piece of glass, it's down below 30%, sometimes 25%, due to the IDR, IDR hops and the dynamics that we described earlier around like things like IP. Yeah, uh, Innovid did a study this past spring that showed that 80% of CTV campaigns are missing their target. Um, that most of its waste. Yeah, so let's turn this positive. I mean, instead of like groaning about it, let, let, first of all, let's not cover our eyes and hold our nose and pretend that it's going to be okay. Because That's, that seems to be the strategy. It is. It is. And it, it's existential for anybody who's not one of the big, huge walled gardens. I mean, it's a crisis. And if you don't, so what's the answer? The answer is got to be some form of collaboration. You've got to work together. You've got to, I mean, we're trying to assert 
truly a universal standard that everyone can tap into and rely on when they want to figure out if you should go into a segment or not. And that's good for you because you get ads that you want. It's good for the brand because you're going to convert because the ad is relevant. It's good for the publisher because they're able to deliver the audience that matters, hopefully increase CPMs instead of this ridiculous race to the bottom. Yeah, I, well, you know how much I believe in this. I've been writing about it, that if we can collaborate and create a data lake that's as large as the wall gardens and maintain it, yeah. and care for it and water it with yeah. as much first party and I call it zero party data supplied by yep. the consumer, yes. then there is an opportunity to provide an alternative to those who are grading their own homework yep. in the wall gardens. Uh, exactly. I really uh, appreciate the work you're doing. I'm fascinated by it, um, and I look forward to hearing more from you soon. Thanks, Thanks so much. Evan. Appreciate cool. it. Cool. This is Evan Shapiro, your media cartographer, Big Cranes, at Can. Check you later.